Tommy Biker here, how are you? Um, so today I'm just going to go clean the bike um, and kind of if you never cleaned a bike before you're interested in doing it for the first time then this video will help you uh, do it and hopefully it will help you do it quickly or help you keep on top of the cleans so it's easier next time around and uh, you're going to get into those spots that are most likely to corrode quickly when weathered badly um, and there'll be uh, cleaning the bike is a good time to do a quick maintenance check so uh, one of the main areas that I like to target is obviously up here this bike doesn't even look that dirty really but um, and upon close inspection here I'm not sure if you can see this but you can see the reflective rim tape has brake dust there, that's brake dust, okay? That's brake dust on the wheel. So this, this can obviously shine up much better. Um, when doing this, I like to clean the calipers, get that nice and yellow and gold again. We can see here, dust is building up. And it's when it starts getting into the bolts here, it starts to look a bit nasty. When doing it, I like to just have a look underneath here to see how the brake pads are getting on so it's a good time to check your brake pad so i mean generally speaking this is about a week week and a half's work of uh worth of uh grit and mud so a quick look at the chain make sure it's got good tension having a look at the teeth make sure they're not really worn or anything like that now underneath here I like to keep the swing arm and everything dirt free because that's that's really where the build up's going to happen and that's that's where people can't be bothered to clean so <sighs> that's the area that's going to get weathered and damaged and corroded if it's not well looked after all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hose down any loose dirt. And when you're getting in it, always spray down, uh, never spray up. You don't want to get it into any areas that uh, water's not supposed to get into. Always try and spray down. Always let the bike cool down. Uh, the engine block and other parts of the bike get really hot when you ride it, obviously. Don't have to tell you that. But the worst thing you can do is just slap a load of cold water onto it now what you might have noticed there is that i wasn't spraying this or this or this or this i mean there's decals on here and you don't want to just slap high water pressure on here so i take i'll be using one of these microfibers so i don't use uh any jet pressure stuff on the on the decals or the the colour work. And as you can see there, there's no need if you do this once every uh, two weeks. Should all be relatively easy to clean. If you want, you can take the seat off and get right in there. A bit of dirt will form up in there, in here. So you can take the seat off. I'm not going to. I usually do in there like once a month. Even when it rains, I don't give it a full clean. Every time it rains and it picks up dirt from the commute, I wheel it in, grab the hose pipe, and just shake down all the all the wet dirt, and then and that's it. And leave it to dry because it's probably going to be raining the next day. And then when I've got a dry spell where I know it's going to be dry, then I'll give it the actual wash. Now if you hose down the wet dirt. It's going to be so easy for you to clean when it gets dry. Um, if you leave it on there, it tends to build up pretty nasty and uh, just takes longer. So like I say, after the wet ride, bring it in, hose it down. That's it. Go back to your daily business. If you can, if you've got the discipline to hose it down every time it rains, then it's going to make it very easy for you to clean. Okay, next bit. Got one of these dishwasher brushes. It's got a really tough set of bristles, really soft set of bristles. Just gonna 
けないねはい。I'm going to show you the cheapest way of doing this. I don't even have a proper dry cloth, a rubber one. I just literally soap it up, hose it down. It's good enough. I want to do this in two hours. I haven't got half a day. You know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go too mad because I ride this bike daily.、Um, it's never going to be clean. Why spend a whole day cleaning it if it's just going to, you know, Look dirty by Monday, Tuesday. So I just spend two hours every week just to keep on top of it, and that's clean enough for me. I'm not, I'm not a specialist, and you know, I haven't got the time to be a specialist. One of the things I used to hate about England was I never had a garage. This is my shared garage here, and、uh, That makes it really good for storing the bike away、um, from all kinds of weather. s However, I live in Australia now,、uh, not England, so the weather isn't even that bad to begin with. I remember when I bought my first bike、uh, in, in England,、uh, my first brand new bike after my second hand one got stolen. And、um, it was around winter time, I think, and I just remember I. Be sleeping in my bed, and you know, sometimes the raindrops would be hitting my window and it would wake me up. And all I could think about is my brand new bike is just sitting out there getting hammered on by this weather. It's literally, you know, deteriorating, and I'm not even riding it. And I hate that feeling. And so I always try and put in the effort to clean them up properly. But you know, with the it, it was an Italian brand, I'm not going to say which Italian brand it was, but. Literally, I left it outside and because I didn't have a garage, and after a year or so, it was falling to bits. Like the weather basically destroyed that bike. And the, the English weather, it can be quite mean. It can get really cold, it can get really hot, and it can muck around with the plastics.、Um, and also, it can, yeah, it gets icy and wet and damp, and it can get really dry. That will really play around with certain components, at least in Australia, it's consistent.、Um, and yeah, I mean, at, there was even one time when, you know, obviously it was a little 125 fared bike, a racy little thing.、Um, I bought, because of the rain, I bought one of the, you know, the covers that you get to cover over it.、And、I used to stick that on when it rained, but then it was, sometimes it would be really rainy and windy. And I used to strap it on, but then it just used to act as a big sail. Sometimes I'll come outside and the bike would be on the floor. It had been blown over. So you can't win. I'm trying to protect it from the rain, but then the wind's just damaged the whole entire side of it from blowing it over. So I'm so thankful to have a garage now. But even so, like when I, I've still got that feeling that when I'm. You know, when I'm at work sitting in the office and I know it's parked outside and it's raining, and I just I hate it. I just want to finish work. I want to jump on the bike. I want to ride it to shelter. I just want to get it out of the rain.、Um, even in this garage, these lights up here, they never turn off. Sometimes I cover up the bike to prevent it from light damage. 
because I don't want the paint to fade quickly, okay? I know that's, that's anal, right? But that's how much I love my bikes. Um, so I'd cover it over just to stop the light damage on the paintworks, stop it fading quickly. Because when it's parked outside in the day, the sun's hitting it, and then when it's parked under here, that light bulb's hitting it. So it's just, it's, it's killing the cells in my paintwork. So I don't know, call me a little bit funny, but I'm not the only one in here. Look, that guy's got one. So I'm not alone. And there's probably a couple of you out there as well <laughs> that, uh, that love their bikes. I'm pretty sure anyone who's watching a vlog about a motorcyclist right now loves their motorbike. So I'm not too worried about letting out that little confession there. This, this is a non-silicon based wash here. I don't use anything silicon based on the whole entire wash because get it on your tires, you get it on your brakes, you're screwed. And you know, if I'm gonna clean this thing once every week or once every two weeks, I want it to be quick and easy. I want one solution, a couple of tools to get the job done, okay? Uh, and I just wanna make it really easy and cheap and simple to remember and quick. So uh, I don't know, some of you guys might be Looking for another video if you want to do the full professional detail, but that's just not me. Right, so here I like to get right under. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you can see that there, but I'm cleaning this bit here. The mud from the tire flicks up there. And that's, you know, that, this is my chassis, this is my framework. I don't want that to corrode away or rust or get nasty because that holds my engine and my wheels on. So I'm gonna give that a good clean. It's this part of the, the bike people tend to neglect. That's the part I try and make sure it's one of the cleanest parts there is. Just gonna get that under there. Not sure if you're seeing that. But there should be a lot of grime coming off there now. This is why I did the the paintwork first is because I'm now using this greasy thing here <sighs> and dipping it back into the bucket. I could change the water, but like I said, I'm looking for a quick, easy to remember method here. So it's going to be nothing too advanced, and that's you might like that. That's one of the things you might like about this video. <sighs> right, you can see I've got underneath there and it's looking quite good now. And I've only spent like a couple of minutes doing it. Okay, so what I've done is I've just gone across the engine, the underneath of it, with the uh, the scrubber, the dishwasher, just getting off the, the tougher dirt. Now that the tougher parts are off, just gonna give it another hose down, have another look, see what I'm dealing with. I never clean the uh, radiator with any bristles because you can actually bend the fins of the radiator. So I just grab the hose, just push out any dirt like that and then from behind as well okay to clean the wheels I use this stuff wheel clean it's uh, non-silicon based so if you sprout on your disc brakes it's not going to be a big deal and you get it on your tires it's not going to be a big deal you can see some real dark black bits in there so you just spray it on So I'm going to leave that, leave it there for two minutes to soak in. Start doing the deck one. Now these little guys, while that stuff's seeping in, this one and this one are good for cleaning this up. Okay. And then the little extra areas that you can't really get to in there. 
I use, uh, well, I don't use that one on there. I use the soft one. So these are like three bucks for a pack of three with wire, bronze, and nylon. And uh, that just allows me to get into the really extra tight bits without taking the bike apart. So that's pretty cool. Got to be quite careful with the rim tape because you can wear it down. It does become less reflective. And these things here are the wheel weights. What they do is when the wheel is going extremely fast and spinning around, uh, there's other parts in the wheel which would, if you just rolled it down a hill, it would start going off to one side. And so they stick these wheel weights here to balance it out. So if you rolled it down a hill, it would go perfectly straight. And uh, what you want to be careful is you don't want to go too hard on this area because I have gone like that and one's popped off. A little squirt into the brake pad area. Make sure you get out all that stuff you put in there. If anything, I mean, you shouldn't be putting stuff in there, but get a good dose of water. Right, there's some fine bits in here. You can't really see that, but like I said, you've got the course. This is what I've got the course still wall for. It's going to pull a bit of that off. It's about that much. Roll it up into a little ball, make it wet. Still using the same solution. It's a little bit cold now, but you know, like I said, do this often and it won't be as difficult. Now the thing about using the steel wall is it will get the dirt off, but it also make it easier for the weather to then attack it. So you need to re-protect the, uh, the pipes with the solution. So once I've done this, I'm gonna apply the, I'm gonna dry the pipes. I'm gonna apply the solution. All right, so doing the steel wall, I've spent about two, three, five minutes doing that. Next up is the metal lifesaver, corrosion and stain remover. If yours are brown, this is what makes it silver. I'm gonna do one tube at a time. And this is very much like the, the stuff that you use to clean the wheels. Get it on there. You'll see a little white layer of the stuff. And just leave it there. Let it sit. Let it work its way into the metal. Right, next bit, last bit. So this is the metal polish, Autosol. Same people that did the, uh, the magic liquid. And this stuff is meant to be applied after you've put on the, uh, the magic liquid. So I'm just going to quickly go over the pipes, dry it off, and wipe it off any excess liquid. Get rid of the excess stuff. Uh, just going to be very quick and again look I've used two rags some of them are kind of damp don't really care it's really thick industrial stuff this it's going to protect my pipes I mean you can probably see it's been doing a good job now I'm just going to get that on there keep going till it's you know in the metal I bet you there's a million things I've done wrong but there's always, there's always a better way. I'm just doing the quick way. And if you have a look at my exhaust, this is done over 30,000 kilometers. Make sure you get the polish on up front and underneath. Because that's where they're gonna really take a lot of the, the weather on the road. I'm 
There you have it, I'm done polishing. Don't know how long that took, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And there you have it. That's how I wash my bike, quick and dirty. I use two dishwasher brushes, some uh, Metal Lifesaver by Autosol, some Metal Polish by Autosol. The solution that I used to wash the bike down the soapy water, that was um, the cheapest stuff I could find that had no silicone in it, found in Bunnings. Um, at the end of the day, you don't need really strong stuff because if you're keeping on top of it, once every week, once every two weeks, then you're not gonna need the strong stuff. I recommend you don't get the strong stuff. That just keeps the paint in your bike a little bit longer. Um, I've light rinsed the paint work and the decals off with the spray setting on the hose pipe. I've used a pressure setting underneath on all the raw metal areas and all the hard gritty areas. I've avoided using the brush on any delicate areas. I've only used the microfiber in the delicate areas along the top and on the paintwork um, and then obviously I've used the wire wall the finest grade the finest grade doesn't really scratch things it's just really good at working its way into metal and getting out the dirt obviously if you apply pressure and keep on going you will start wearing away the paint but it's absolutely great for getting the muck off of raw aluminium or raw steel that kind of stuff uh, I've also used the Motul wheel cleaner I don't use any silicone products because then I can just go get loose with it all, splash it everywhere, doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm, you know, my brakes are gonna be working fine, my tires are still gonna be grippy because there's no silicone based products in there. Um, I've done it when the engine's cold. Uh, cold. Uh, don't just start splashing cold water into a warm engine or a hot engine. The metal is gonna uh, kind of react badly to that when it stiffens up and it could uh, just do more harm than good. I mean, I don't think it's gonna do massive amounts of harm, but you know, if, if you know how metal expands under heat, then uh, it's a good thing to let the engine naturally cool down before you start getting the cold water on it. And you know, I don't even use cold water there. I used hot water. I also use rubber gloves. That's gonna be less time cleaning my hands. So anyway, uh, this, this vlog was done on a Friday night. I started cleaning this bike at 10 p.m. Uh, so I could go riding with it tomorrow morning and it would look clean. As you can see, it looks fabulous, even though it didn't look that bad to begin with, but it didn't look that bad to begin with because I'm keeping on top of it. Now I just think it looks outstanding still. This bike's done 30,000 Ks. It's ridden every day in all weathers. It's a commuter bike and it's my, it's my bit of fun on the weekends.